call to link farmers to better markets. Pogera locals reject barrack response. And plastic ban effective as of 1st November 2019. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Saturday's news. With more emphasis to revamp the agriculture sector, Prime Minister James Marape wants better markets for small farmers. Speaking at the 2019 Commodity Board Retreat in Port Moresby, PM Marape urged boards of leading PNG commodities to initiate and create market opportunities. The Prime Minister says the government will allocate more funding for the agriculture sector in 2020. Speaking at the Commodity Board Retreat, the Prime Minister wants better market links for small farmers around the country. He says PNG has a lot to offer with commodities like cocoa, copra and coffee but lack better market or selling point. PM Marape challenged all boards to drive this agenda forward. Cattle flying almost six to seven hundred million every year of rice import. We want to assist that. We want to grow our rice for the first instance and then the excess. The Prime Minister acknowledged the hard economic times but says government wants innovation in the agriculture sector. PM Marape says major commodities must align their policy frameworks and will be driven by partnerships for counterfunding. He says this can generate millions to support the economy. I want to make our citizens to this second time. One of those micro funding assistance that we will put next year, Hassan. To the US, directly to uh, not as how do we subsidize how do we subsidize uh, you know, partner in districts and problems to run across the country. So that's where it was coming. A significant cut in other sectors like health and education is expected in the 2020 budget appropriation. The Prime Minister said levels of government will be tasked to drive the economy through community projects. PM Marape urged every Papua New Guinean to till the land. If that piece of land can be turned into productivity, and I think productivity can be found in the agricultural sector. Jack Lapava Jr., National MTV News. The Tebai Agri Ventures is a business group that has recently become popular in the Gela Gela resettlement area of East New Britain province. The agriculture business group focuses on a concept of backyard farming as a means of earning an income. Founder and leader of the group, Murphy Selep, says the business began as a small vegetable farming business but has now grown into a business for the whole community. Murphy Salab comes from Bai, a ward in the Rabaul district that suffered extensive damages during the 1994 eruption of Vulcan and Tavurvur. Today he lives in a care center together with several hundreds of others at the resettlement home at Gele Gele on the outskirts of Kokopo town. They were forced to relocate from their customary land about 20 years ago as their village was declared unsafe to live in. Murphy graduated from the University of Natural Resources and Environment in 2009 with a diploma in tropical agriculture. But like any other young ordinary Papua New Guineans who graduated from university, he couldn't find the job he wanted. So after 10 years of looking for jobs, he returned to his resettlement home to do something different. And he created Tebai AgriVentures, a small family vegetable farming business where he grew crops at his backyard to eat and sell. Government been can put him me plan lawyer na land space blow its individual out all there like M been twenty by thirty number out or twenty by fifty which M been having to sell or make him sell house all but stop to sleep whereas up blow gone go walk like make him garden blow sustain him life liberal land or place and be not enough on the land space. Living in a settlement is very difficult, Murphy says, especially when they don't own the land and when there is no land to produce their own food, they couldn't produce enough to feed themselves and this has created more social problems in their communities. 
you can make him this like I walk with him now, me block him, make him let him stop, yeah. And now boy stop, free man to solve it to him, it's like I so. And charisma and me like him, Muslim, at least, I got a community, if you got to walk with them, this like I live, live, walk, live, side, live, backyard, farming, especially inside that, live, gele, gele. Family also, them sustainable, uh, a living, long, them all right. Murphy started the project as a family business, but interest from the nearby communities have grown, particularly from youth and women's group who have seen the economic potentials in his project. So when I introduced him, this is a backyard farming. The old man planted all the interest now, all youth, blah, blah, all sample, papa, mama, all the like part and parcel. Project. Apart from farming food crops, they have also ventured into poultry. Murphy says he hopes to secure big markets where they will order in bulk so that they can collectively sell as a group. I play starting, I play looking at the same man, I can buy more little when I blow my pillow house. I play looking, I play my master, I buy some plastic. But for now, he says they will need to work extra harder to grow as much as they can to meet the demands of their customers in the value chain they created themselves. Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News, Kokopo. A team from SEPA currently in Medang says Medang waters are safe for people to use for recreational activities like swimming. However, SEPA is not allowing locals to go out fishing or consume fish as more investigation needs to be carried out. Regulatory Operations Director Michael Wow says they need to establish more scientific facts to say that the fish is safe for locals to eat. A team from SIPA is in Medang to meet with affected locals. The provincial administration and Ramunikul to inform them about the findings of the initial investigation they had conducted during the meeting. SIPA told locals that the sea is now safe for recreational activities only. But SIPA at this time cannot let locals consume fish nor go out fishing. According to the Regulatory Operations Director Michael Wow, they are yet to conduct an impact study into establishing the cause of fish dying within the Basamuk area and other parts of Medang. That is also uh, one of the one of the most important uh, impact studies that we are yet to conduct, but it's it's been worked on. Again, we have um, our financial constraints, but. Uh, now that we have been able to secure some funding, hopefully by next week, we should have officers on the ground to at least um, uh, conduct that survey. From the presentation, SIPA explained a comparative analysis was conducted on the mine tailing waste and the slurry spillage. The mine tailing waste is treated waste that goes out from the process plant at Basamuk. However, the slurry incident on August 24th was raw material coming straight from the Kurumbukari mine site and it overflowed into the sea. To further qualify on this uh, slurry concentration, it has got certain heavy metals in that uh, concentration, which is also harmful to the environment. But uh, when it did enter the the sea waters, considering the, the volume of the sea and the wave action and all this, uh, sea is a very good buffer, buffer to to contain and dilute uh, such uh, chemicals or heavy metals that, that may be available. So in that process, the sea is eventually diluted and precipitated much of those uh, heavy metals that would have been present in that slurry. The team informed the meeting that since the spillage, their response was to investigate and make findings to make sure there were chemicals present in that slurry. So far, the team had only conducted a water quality study, which they had done a presentation of. We will be looking into the fish particularly to establish if um, 
Lake Kifish, uh, which has been caught or found around Basamuk area, the nearby Raiko Saido area, and even the wider Medeng uh, surroundings. Uh, we will need to establish if uh, the, the fish that are within the wider Asolab uh, Bay is, uh, is safe to consume. In August 24th, there was leakage at one of the processing plants at Basamuk that had overflowed and went into the sea. The spillage has led to reports of contamination down to marine life, which had also led to claims of fish dying in and around Medang waters. This has prompted Medang provincial government to engage a Swiss scientist, Dr. Alex Mozon, to carry out an investigation if any possible contamination done to the marine population. SIPA and MRA had also carried out their own investigations into the slurry spill incident. Martha Louise, National MTV News, Medang. The 23 landowner groups of the Pogera Gold Mine in Enga province have rejected a submission by mine operator Barrack Gold Corporation. The landowners say they have suffered enough and want Barrack out. Barrack's contract expired earlier this year. Since the signing of the mining lease resolution this week, landowners of the Pogera Gold Mine are urging the Prime Minister not to renew Barrack Gold's submission. This is because of Barrack's non-compliance to resettlement and alleged environment pollution, among other reasons. A woman representative and landowner of the Tieni Yangua clan, Kimaleya Ondalane, says her family was never resettled away from the mine. Beric promised me that my children and their children will benefit from the mine. I thought it was all true and I let the company take over my land. But since the company operated, it lied to me and took everything. Chairman of Pogero Landowners Group, Nixon Mangape, says their land has been used and not much tangible development has happened. Now, me talking about you now. You like cutting stages and double mountain blow me. Me talking about now. This project expires, so you ready to exit? You ready to exit? You exit peacefully. No negotiation. A person like me, I should live in Dubai or Singapore or somewhere and, and enjoying a luxury life, but I live in a settlement. So, therefore, me asking Honorable Prime Minister Blomi, Honorable James Marabe, Stephen Government Long, reject him outright this uh, application where Barak is submitting Long a uh, government. Thank you. The 23 landowner groups claim the mine has done enough damage to the people of Pogera. I don't know what benefit. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. 10 years or 20 years, I'm going to mine now. I People work in business as a company talk. Let them not kiss employment, kiss contract, this and that. And all operating costs, blonde is mine. You know benefit or you know profit. Profit, you go out now. All in a blonde, kiss him benefit long end. Now, look, you got him family, blonde, garden, blonde, bagra, blonde, water, blonde, bagra, blonde. You know, blonde, buy him nubla, water, kiss him supply, water supply, come on, buy him nubla, grano. There's a lot of money in the Golong people. Meanwhile, Prime Minister James Marape has urged all landowners to finalize the position paper before submitting it to the national government. Michelle Steven, National MTV News. Here with National MTV News, we'll be back with more after these messages. Don't go away. Welcome back. Efforts to impose a ban on the manufacturing, import and use of plastic shopping bags is seen to be progressing well. In